excited. Let me just. Hello, everyone. It's me, Jackie P. And we're going to talk about my fav one of my favorite subjects, and that's knowing who you are and knowing how to be a great leader to people who are different than you. Yeah. And how to be a great um, learner from folks who are different than you. So the very first thing we're going to do is I'm going to share my screen eventually. So we're going to do what I like to call and what everyone likes to call the color code personality test. And I need to make it full screen. All right. So what's a color code personality test? Um, essentially, it's a test that uses your strengths and who you are to help you understand how you relate to other people. Okay. So we're going to kick off this little segment with a test, with a little quiz, a quizlet. So if you don't have paper, I'm going to give you 10 seconds to grab paper and we are going to take a quiz together. Um, so you're going to number that paper for me, one to 20. Um, the first, this is the first one. And then there's seven more questions, I think at the end, but you're going to take, let me explain what to do before you start. Every one, every line is a question. So you're going to choose one um, thing per line and it's going to be how you identify. Okay. So for example, number one, do you feel you are more opinionated, nurturing, inventive, or outgoing? Take your knee jerk reaction. Take the way that you feel just from your first, first reading. Don't think too much. Okay. So I'm going to set a timer and you're going to have two and a half minutes with this first section. Okay. Um, and we are going to just quickly go through knee jerk reactions, take your, your first feeling and write it down on your paper. Okay. Timer starts now. And anyone who has been on meetings with me for the last month knows that I've been sick for the last month. So if I cough and I lose my voice, I apologize. It's gross. And it's just how we are right now. If you need to, if you need me to read it, I can, but I don't, I don't want to inform your, your feelings at all. Are we writing the letter, did you say? Just the letter? the letter. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was the question I see in the chat? So look at the groupings of, of four words and choose which one is most like you, your knee-jerk reaction. Opinionated, nurturing, inventive, or outgoing. Power-oriented, perfectionist, indecis in indecisive, self-centered. Each one... Um, just choose that letter, knee-jerk reaction. And I know some of these have a negative connotation. Don't judge them because a person who is silently stubborn is probably full of a lot of other great, um, great qualities for being stubborn. So don't judge your answer. Just choose, just choose. You have about 30 seconds left with this slide. If you're watching this on the replay, you can fast forward. You can pause then fast forward. Okay, I'm going to take it to the next one. Even if you're not done, that's okay. For this section, go 21 through 28, all right? And I'm going to read these quickly for you. Number 21, if I applied for a job, a prospective employer would most likely hire me because I am A, driven, direct, delegating, B, deliberate, accurate, reliable, C, 
patient, adaptable, tactful. D, fun-loving, spirited, casual. Choose only one that you feel most identifies you. 22. For me, life is most meaningful when it, A, is task-oriented and productive. B, is filled with people and purpose. C, is free of pressure and stress. D, allows me to be playful and lighthearted and optimistic. Choose one. This one is fun for me. I love it. As a child, 23, as a child, I was A, stubborn, bright, and or aggressive. B, well-behaved, caring, and or depressed. Number C, uh, C, quiet, easygoing, and or shy. D, too talkative, happy, and or playful. Number 24, as an adult, I am A, opinionated, determined, or bossy, responsible, uh, sorry, B, responsible, honest, and or unforgiving, C, accepting, contented, and or unmotivated, D, charismatic, positive, and or obnoxious. 25, when making decisions, I am A, assertive, articulate, and logical, B, deliberate, precise, cautious, C, indecisive, timid, and or reluctant. D, impulsive, uncommitted, and inconsistent. 26, when I fail, I feel. A, slightly self-critical, yet verbally stubborn and defensive. B, guilty, self-critical, and vulnerable to depression. I dwell on it. C, unsettled and fearful, but I keep it to myself. D, embarrassed and nervous, seeking to escape the situation. Two more, last two. These mean the most. Are you ready? 27. Work is A, a most productive way to spend one's time. B, a healthy activity which should be done right if it's to be done at all. Work should be done before one plays. C, a positive activity as long as it's something I enjoy and I don't feel pressured to accomplish. D, a necessary evil, much less inviting than play. And last one, 28, to feel alive and positive, I seek A, adventure, leadership, lots of action. B, security, creativity, and purpose. C, acceptance and safety. D, excitement, playful productivity, and the company of others. All right, now what I want you to do is I want you to tally up your number of answers. So how many A's do you have? How many B's do you have? How many C's do you have? And how many D's that you have? Okay. While we're tallying that up, can you go back to that first slide? That first slide, I can give you 30 more seconds with this guy right here. Okay. Well, whilst you tally. I'm gonna check the chat for anything important. You missed 18 through 20, Tucky, they're back up. And as you're tallying, don't judge your answers. There's no right and wrong here. You got 10 seconds. All right, pallies. If you have, hold on, I'm gonna stop the share because I wanna see hands. If you have mostly A's, Raise your hand or put it in the chat that you have mostly A's. Okay. Della's got mostly A's. I see Della. All right. If you had mostly A's, I guess that most leaders have mostly A's. You are a red. Reds are motivated by power. Reds like fancy things. Reds are always going to go for the achievement, okay? You're motivated, you're goal-oriented, you're assertive, you're confident, you're not afraid to ask for what you want. You're a natural leader. People fall in behind you. You are competitive. You're determined. You are independent. You don't rely on anyone to get what you want. You are straightforward. But Reds, you can also be aggressive, impatient, stubborn, maybe a little insensitive or intolerant of failure. 
as Jackie Geisinger checks her nails, the red, the red of it all. <laughs> you reds are so important. Okay. You are wonderful leaders. And we're really excited that you're here. If you have mostly Bs, can you raise your hand or put it in the chat for me? My mostly Bs. <laughs> oh my gosh, wait, I just got a chat. Maxine, you're mostly Bs. You guys, guess what? I am also mostly Bs. We are blue. I'm the bluest blue that was ever a blue. We are motivated by intimacy. We are empathetic. We're sensitive, we're supportive, we're great communicators, we love our eye contact, we're intuitive, we're relationship-based, we're trustworthy, we're helpful, but we blues, we feel things really big, right? So we can be overly emotional, we can be overly critical, especially of ourselves, we can be indecisive and hypersensitive to criticism from others, okay? a lot of great stuff about blues and if you're into heart stuff come straight to your blue friends all right we love you blues um shawnee is a blue and if you're tied shirley's a blue i'm not surprised um if you are tied listen just listen all the way through all right if you're mostly c's show me your hands or put it in the chat mostly c's are a very interesting group you are greens you're motivated by peace. You like things very calm, okay? You're balanced. You're empathetic. You're cooperative. You like to collaborate. You love to be part of a group. My greens don't like to stand out, okay? We're open-minded. We're non-judgmental. We're patient. We're flexible. But my greens can be indecisive. They can be really passive, okay? They can overthink. They can also be really rigid and hypercritical when other people make mistakes. Um, greens tend to isolate themselves and they tend to be perfectionists. They don't want anybody to see anything less than their best. And that's hard. That's so hard. But you greens, you fill a super important role on the team. And we're so glad you're here. Now, if you're mostly D's, throw your hands up or get in that chat. I'm going to go check on my C's. Lynette's a, a green. I actually, I could totally see that. That's so fun. Uh, Fanta, you're, you are too. Janine's a green. I love it. Okay. Learning something new about all my friends here. If you are a D, if you had mostly D's, raise your hand. Um, my, my D's, you're yellow. <laughs> oh, Belinda was a B like me. I love that. If you are a yellow, you are the, you're probably bored, honestly, right now, if you're a yellow, because you are motivated completely <laughs> by fun, right? You are optimistic. You are spontaneous. You're social. You're the one that's going to like organize a party and shout up at the top of your lungs, how excited you are. And you're going to want to play with everybody that's there. You're playful. You're creative. You're people oriented, but my yellows, sometimes you can be a little aggressive and People might call you too much. Oh, you're too much. Sometimes yellows are impatient, disorganized. Um, I love my yellows because you guys are a boatload of laughs, but sometimes you can be in, uh, inconsistent and you can lack some focus, right? My ADHD friends, you're yellows, right? You're so into the fun that you get lost in it, um, but you're on a really important part of the team because you bring the laughs and you bring the things that make us want to keep showing up. So let me check the chat, see who I've got yellows. Let's see. I am not shocked you're a D, Tucky. Debbie, Debbie, of course you're a yellow, Debbie. You were so much fun. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, Lynette, you're close. I love it. I love it. Okay, guys. So now that you've identified who you are, let's keep going. Oh, come on, slides. So if you are a leader or if you are being led in a, a team like ours, there's special ways to interact with each type of person, right? So if you're working actively to lead a red, say I was a team leader, I'm a district director and Jackie is on my team and she's so red and I don't know how to lead a red. So to lead a red, you have to be clear and assertive and goal oriented. You have to say exactly what you need when you're working with reds, okay? Because reds love it when you're direct. 
They don't want you to beat around the bush. That's boring, right? They want direct, concise communication of what their goals are. They want to know what you expect of them because they want to hit it. They want to hit it and they, they like want to blow it out of the park, right? So provide clear opportunities for leadership, clear goals, and recognize those reds. Those reds live to be seen for the perfectionists that they are, right? We love the red. If you're, oh, sorry, wrong button. If you're leading a blue, say that I'm on Jackie's team and she's like, I don't know how to lead this weirdo. Be supportive, actively listen, show you care about my feelings. Okay, show you care about um, the blues emotional well being. Blues love to connect their work. Blues are really emotional and really invested in everything they do. Blues are the relationship people in this business. The blues are the eye contact people and they're making best friends with every client, right? Offer support up for those blues and tell them they're doing a great job. Believe in them. Okay, the blues need you to show up for them. If you are leading a green, greens can be tricky. Greens can be tricky because they don't always communicate how they're feeling. So be patient and diplomatic and avoid confrontation with our greens, okay? Everything needs to be peaceful for the green. They like rules. They like to follow rules, okay? Greens need calm, respectful communication. Don't get hot with a green. They'll shut right down, okay? Um, create harmonious work environments with very little opportunities for conflict. They like competition, but they want everybody to be a winner. Okay. And finally, leading our yellows. Yellows can be tough to wrangle in. So it's important to be open to new ideas and encourage creativity and fun with the yellows. Keep things engaging. If you were going to gamify your team in any way, if you were going to give them goals to hit and, and like a little candy land board to trace to keep moving up their titles, that's it for the yellow. They're like, yes, absolutely. Gamify their goals and tasks, okay? Yellows love lively conversation. They're the ones coming to your Zoom meetings and just to everyone. <laughs> Our yellows love to be the center of attention. So when you're giving them recognition, really go for it. Really go hard. Okay. <laughs> Excuse me. So what do we do when opposites attract? If I was a leader and I had somebody under me who was just so difficult for me to lead, or if I'm a consultant and I'm having a hard time connecting with my leader, you guys might be different. You might be opposites on the scale. Okay. So most leaders are just even a little bit red, okay? So if you're a red and you're dealing with someone who's super soft and who just needs everything to feel good and that's exhausting for you, here's a couple of ways to lead your blue, to deal with your blue. You have to be more patient with them, okay? You have to be more empathetic to their feelings, even when it makes you want to tear your hair out. You have to listen actively and show that you care about them. And like sometimes reds have a difficult time showing that they care, right? So focus on building a strong, trusting relationship with your blue and that blue will never let you down. If you build a good relationship with these people on your team, they will never not show up for you because they care. They care too much to let it go. Okay. Conversely, if you're a blue and you're dealing with a red and it's like speaking Latin to a chicken, you have to be more assertive with your reds, okay? Don't let your red teammates or your red leaders walk all over you because they will. They don't mean to. It's not their fault, but they will. So you have to emphasize the importance of results and action with them. Action is so important to reds. You have to be prepared to provide very clear goals and very clear mile markers along the way so the reds know that they're doing the right things, okay? Don't be afraid to communicate, even if it makes you uncomfortable, the things that are important for these folks, okay? Now, the greens and the yellows are a little trickier, but they often are drawn to each other. Yellows love the consistency and the calm of greens because they know they can rely on them to find their keys or find their bag when they lose it in Hawaii, Debbie, or when somebody 
um, comes along, a green, a yellow comes along to a greens team, they breathe life back into it. It's less boring with the yellows around. Nothing feels lame to the to the greens when the yellows are around, okay? But if you're a green leader and you're dealing with one of those wild and crazy yellows, you want to be open to new ideas and creativity. You want to highlight them and say, all right, you are you are the glee club. You are the sunshine committee yellow. Make it fun this week. Encourage lively and engaging work environments for these friends, okay? Balance your need for calm and peace with their need for joy and excitement, okay? And even if it makes you uncomfortable, Greens, if it makes you uncomfortable to have a boatload of fun, have a yellow handle it for you. Now, if you're a yellow, a super fun yellow leader, and you're dealing with someone who's just like zen, zen kitty, be patient. Avoid causing stressful deadlines for your greens. <laughs> Excuse me. Never ever, yellows, I know you're all guilty of it. Never ever leave things to the last day with those greens because those greens will shut down immediately and they will say, she was unprepared. She was trying to do it at the last second I, and it makes me mad, right? Those greens like to finish early. They are not wait for the last minute. So you have to prepare when you have greens around you. You have to respect their need for calm because if you make it too crazy, they're going to push back. They're going to try to stay away from you. And you have to be tactful when addressing any kind of issues with your yellow, with your greens yellows because they're very sensitive and they do not want to be corrected and they certainly don't want to be called out in public, okay? So that's just a few little helpful pointers and I hope that that... Um, kind of aligns to people that you know and archetypes that you know in your team and in maybe in your life. Um, it's it's easy to expect that everyone will react to a situation the same as you, and they won't because everybody's different, right? So learning to be flexible and learning to move through discomfort with your teammates is so super important, okay? Because in the end, what do all colors create? All colors blend to white. And what is white? Light. White is all light. And together, that's what these teams are, right? As we all show up together and as we all blend our like wild and crazy personalities and our wild and crazy impulses and behaviors together, we make white and we make light. And that's really the point of this whole thing. And that's the point of direct sales. And that's the point of the way that we build teams and the culture we create is that together we're way, way bigger and way more powerful when we all shine, right? When we're all big, important sunshines. Okay. So if you have any questions, throw them in the, in the chat or open your mic and ask. I am so excited that I got to share this with you. It was so fun to share it with the leaders in Las Vegas and we had just the best time. So think about it. Think about who you are and how you, how you are and how you can be better for each color on your team. Um, and I love it. I love it. I love it so much. Yes. I will email the, it's so just be in the deck for this. Yeah. Yep. Just as normal. You'll get it all leaders, time. you always get everything after an email. So you don't have to fret. Okay. So all thanks, right. Guys. You're all the best. That was so fun. So for our dear blue friend, can we just say thank you for being a part of the general market? She made it the whole year. Jackie P, oh, we thank you and appreciate you for a great year. I have loved having you as a partner. We have all loved working with you, gaining and growing together with you. So again, Jackie P, you know what? I'm I'm equal red and uh, D. Uh, there's you're red blue. and yellow. No, that's true. And that's, that's true. The Chiefs colors, Kansas City Chiefs. Hello, baby. That's Look. what I'm talking about. So, it's perfect. That is you, your orange. There's that fun, okay? But <laughs> from all the colors of our rainbow, from Jackie and I, we say thank you for being a part of our leader team, our future leader team, and all of our fabulous consultants across the USA. For all the consultants, unless you're joining us tomorrow for the future uh, leader training, 
this and Marketing Monday will be our last times together for the year. Leaders, you know we love and appreciate you. And we're looking forward to bringing you the Las Vegas training that we did on how to build a resilient team in 2024. We'll be doing that on your final leader meeting on the 21st. So again, thank you all. Thank you, Jackie, for a great training. And thank you all for sharing tonight. Happy holidays. Bye, everyone. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs>